Inside the magic realm, a world filled with limitless possibilities, there are people who can fly broomsticks and levitate objects using the power of their mind. Everyone can use magic like it's part of their everyday life, and it determines everything in this world. But in the corner of a forest where dragons fly like it's normal, two animals are shocked to the bone. There is one existence that defies the natural order. Bash racks the inhuman weight and begins eating a cream puff like he always does. Deep inside the forest, an old man controls magic to pour himself a cup of coffee. He has been hiding in the forest with Mash his entire life so that others don't find out about his existence. Nothing bothers him anymore though, because his experiences have given him a way to combat stress. Mash barges in and breaks the door, causing his grandpa to scream in insanity. He yells at him for destroying the door, but Mash couldn't remember if he was supposed to pull or push, so he decided to just force it open. Mash apologizes and says he will fix it, but he goes on to just smash the door which makes the old man scream again. He keeps pounding in and out until he completely destroys the door in half. Roger finally gives up and realizes this kid has no hope. They enjoy a cup of tea together, and Mash asks his grandpa why all of his workouts are purely physical. Roger tries to think of a reason to give Mash without revealing the truth, because in this world, Mash is the only one without the ability to use magic. He decides to reveal the truth a different time, and tells Mash not to break the door while he's gone. Mash says that he knows how to fix it, but Roger yells at him to just learn how to open it like a normal person instead. Before heading out, Mash's grandpa warns him once again to never venture into the city, and Mash promises that he won't. Well that was all bullshit. Mash had a flyer from the city about a special new cream puff, and he wasn't going to let it go to waste. As he walked around the city, he saw everyone using magic to perform all sorts of things, but everything they used magic for, he could have done them with his hands. He approaches the cream puff stand and pays for his order, but all of his coins are just bent in half. This startles the merchant, but Mash decides to take it back and snaps the coin into its proper position. The poor man is scared by what he just witnessed, but eventually creates his order and hands it to him. A gust of wind comes by, revealing Mash's face. In that split moment, everyone in town saw it. He was the only one without a scar on his face, but Mash has no idea why they're all staring at him. Meanwhile, a policeman is torturing a criminal for stealing and wasting his time, but receives a call in the middle of his work. While Mash continues walking around the city, everyone continues staring at him in shock, and he keeps going until he bumps into a police officer and soils his shirt. The hardworking man continues drinking and yells at him, knocking the cream puff out of his hand, and asks Mash what he's going to do about his clothes. Mash's intelligent response was to use his Giga Chad muscles and rip the clothes off the police officer. This infuriates the police officer, and he continues yelling, but his superior, Brad Coleman, comes from behind. He wonders why his comrade is shirtless, but realizes that the unmarked child happens to be here. Before he could approach him for questioning, Mash's grandpa runs in and takes him out of the situation as fast as he can. Brad thinks this may be his chance for a promotion, and casts a magical bird to follow their location. Inside their cabin, Mash's grandpa yells at him for breaking his promise, so Mash sincerely apologizes. Roger thinks he can't stay mad at him when he makes this face, so he commands him to redo today's training routine as punishment. Mash agrees and hands him the cream puffs he got for him. He begins walking towards the door, but Roger already knows how this is going to end, so he opens the door for him to avoid having it broken again. While Mash is reckless, he understands why his son has done this. He's a teenager after all, and they've been hiding away from this city all this time. He sees a magical bird staring at him, and the entire entrance gets exploded by the police. Poor old man can't get a break. In the forest, a squirrel notices something is off, and sees Mash carrying the weight like it's a toy. Poor Squirrel doesn't know what weights are, but even he knows to be scared. Mash heads back to the broken door, but forgets if he was supposed to push or pull. Before he breaks the door down, he hears the voice of the police officers inside. They have restrained his grandpa for hiding a person incapable of using magic, because in this world, anyone incapable of using it must be eliminated. Mash realizes the truth of his situation, but his grandpa won't reveal his location at all no matter how hard they beat him. The old man has sworn to never reveal Mash's location. He remembers when he was young and how his mom would yell at him for having such a weak magical ability. Even his bosses would constantly call him useless for how incapable he was. He kept failing his entire life because of his weak magical talent, and got fired from every job he ever had. He felt completely unwanted, and wanted to hug the ground. But before he was ready to hug the ground passionately, he heard a baby crying. 
It had no magical scar, and he realized that it must have been abandoned just like him. The baby was excited to have a person hugging it, and this was the first time Roger ever felt like someone needed him. He had sworn ever since, even if the world denied his existence and they weren't related by blood, he would become a father to that baby. He screams at Mash to run away, but the police officer begins beating him. He prays that Mash is able to run away from here and keeps screaming at him to leave. The officer has had enough of this and prepares a magical blow to end the old man. His subordinates are ready to look for him, but Mash destroys the door and punches the police officer in the face, sending him launching into the wall and destroying it. Mash stares at the people standing in his way, and the big police officer faces off with him. But Mash rips his shirt off again and begins slapping him until he knocks him out of the way. Mash has come back and tells his grandpa that he would never leave the only family he has. He looks at Brad and tells him that he will be sending him to hell. But what he doesn't know is that Brad is one of the strongest mages in the entirety of the world. So Mash would never stand a chance. Brad prepares to use his ultimate magical spell that even drove a dragon away and sends the magic ability launching towards Mash. A giant explosion sends plumes of smoke coming from the home, but when they disappear, Mash is standing there like nothing happened. The ultimate magical ability that drove away even a dragon was slapped by Mash. Brad prepares to use a magical power that would destroy this entire city, and he sends it launching towards Mash. But before it can even scathe him, Mash slaps it away once more deep into the forest. The officer continues sending his magical blows, but Mash deals with them like they're volleyballs, and even begins juggling them. He even starts dribbling the balls like he's made it out of blue lock. After dealing with all the attacks, Mash decides to pick up his grandpa's wand, and the officer thinks he's about to use magic. So he prepares a defense circle to ward off any magical attack that may come. But Mash gets into a baseball pitching position and throws the wand straight towards Brad. Brad bends over and finally realizes that Mash's long wand was able to penetrate his defenses. Mash tells him that if he threatens his family ever again, he will not wake up to see the next day. Brad laughs and says he will allow his family to stay hidden on one condition. Every year, one student is promoted to a divine visionary. He will allow his family to stay hidden if he's able to become that divine visionary, because then, it will mean even God accepted him. Society will have no choice but to follow along, and Brad gets to gain all the fame and fortune that come from it. Nash's grandpa warns him to not believe those words so easily, but Brad tells him that the entire country will hunt him down if he refuses. This is his only option if he wants to continue surviving. He may be fine, but his old man won't be. After hearing those words Mash gladly accepts this challenge. His grandpa yells at him that he wouldn't even be able to survive in a magical school. But Mash only cares about one thing, living in peace with his grandpa. Even if it's attending the darkest magical school in all of the world and risking his life to live peacefully with his grandpa, he will crush any challenge with his bare fists. The Easton Magic Academy is one of the most prestigious schools in the entirety of the magical realm. Not even 3% of all applicants can get in, making it harder than even Harvard. Only those with the greatest magical powers will be able to make it past the entrance gates. The entrance exam professor, Lucci, overlooks all the students who have come to take the entrance exam. He thinks that all of these students look mediocre, but banging begins interrupting his thoughts. Mash is out here doing power cleans like he's an NFL player. Lucci wondered what this dunce could be doing right before an exam. But Mash went on to start doing the invisible chair in front of him. What puzzled Lucci the most, however, was the dumbasses trying to hide behind Mash like their trees. Roger wonders if this would work, but Brad tells him that they even created a fake scar for him. Lucci thinks that slackers like him will fail anyway, and goes on to begin the entrance ceremony. He appears from a plume of fire and introduces himself as the seventh greatest magician. Mash says it must have been hot coming out of fire like that, and this pisses Lucci off. He tells everyone to take their seats and uses his magical ability to spawn desks along with papers and pen. Everyone praises him. Mash says that he's overcompensating since he could have just taken them to a room that was already set up. That's not ridiculous. That's not ridiculous to say that. Lucci tries to ignore all these attacks because someone like him is sure to fail the entrance exam. The students look at the test paper and see all the words squirming around. This was the exam, and Brad and Roger wonder why they ever thought Mash could ever pass this test. Mash commands the words to stop moving, but nothing happens. He crushes his pen and commands them to stop moving, so the words get scared of him and come to a stop. Lucci thinks he probably just randomly scribbled, but sees all the words aligned perfectly. Mash goes on to make the boulder appear to float, 
and is even fast enough to run above the water. He found every possible way to pass the tests without using magic, and this infuriated Luchi. So for the next exam, he made a giant maze appear. But this was no ordinary maze. It was filled with traps that you could only pass with your magical ability. Mash thinks this is the easiest of all tests so far. But the main love interest decided to enter. She begged him to help her because she would give him some top as a reward. What do you mean by that? Mash is a giga chad so he accepted her offer. They began walking together and the girl tripped and fell flat on her face. Wild goblins appeared and this show just turned into goblin slayer. Hands started coming out of the ground and poor Mash is getting bored of this. They keep walking and she manages to fall into a trap. But Mash is still in it just for the top. He starts running before it's too late for the tests, so the girl uses her magical ability to restrain him with metal cuffs. She reveals she'd been deceiving him this whole time so he doesn't make it to the goal area. Mash thinks it's unfortunate he's been deceived, and breaks the metal cuffs, shocking the girl. He runs faster than the flash, and before the girl is able to respond, a giant pharaoh approaches her. It says four legs in the morning, two in the afternoon, and three at night. What creature is this? Lemon, yes that's her name. Forget she's a human because she's been called a fruit her entire life. What? She tries to raise her wand to fight against the monster, but the pharaoh knocks her wand out and threatens her to answer immediately. She struggles to think, and her time is up. In the last moment when she's about to die, she screams for help, but realizes that she doesn't deserve it. After all, she was the one who deceived others anyway. In the last instant before the wand ends her, Mash comes in and says that a creature like that couldn't possibly exist. Lemon wonders why he came back to rescue her after she deceived him, and he tells her that he kind of felt sorry for her. She wonders how they're going to pass since the time for the test is almost up. In the last moment, all the students hear rumbling and the sound of destruction. Luchi thinks there's no way he would be able to break through those one meter thick walls, but Mash is the absolute giga chad alpha male and has destroyed every single wall in his way. The Grandmaster sees this and thinks he's an interesting applicant. However, all the students accuse him of merely cheated and scream at him to go home. Poor Mash gets sad and wants to go home himself. He takes the criticism of everyone yelling at him. But Lemon yells at them to stop because it wasn't his fault. Luchi yells at her to stop talking before he reconsiders the promise he made with her. But Lemon goes on to reveal that she was merely following Luchi's orders to deceive Mash. Because if she was successful, he would allow her to attend the school which would save her family from their poverty. Even though she deceived him, Mash still saved her and proposed to marry her. Mash tries to explain the actual situation, but she still thinks he was confessing his love to her. Luchi smiles, saying there was nothing wrong with what he did because he's the examiner after all. These two are merely useless so he wanted to dispose of them. He calls Lemon stupid and says that's why she's had a miserable life. He activates a magical circle, telling Mash to challenge him if he wishes to somehow pass. The entire field overflows with his magical powers. Mash tells him that he's going too far, and Roger and Brad think that they should have expected it. Lukai is ready to fight him off, but the headmaster appears in the sky and says they will be moving on to interviews now. He tells Luchi to meet him in his office after this. The first person to be interviewed is Mash, and they begin the interview right away. He asks him why he chose this academy, and Mash thinks about it. Mash states that he wanted to live in peace with his family, and the Grand Master accepts that answer. The principal goes on to ask why he saved that girl even if it would risk failing the test. Mash says he didn't want to regret not saving her. He says that even if the Sphinx was stronger than him, he still needed to find a way to save her. The Grandmaster warns him that there are monsters out there that would overwhelm him, so he asks him what he would do in those situations. He goes on to use magical power to summon a giant creature and challenges Mash to face him. This extraordinary power even sends fear into the other council members, and the Grandmaster explains that his grandpa's soul is latched inside of this monster. But that's not all, if Knife stabbed into the doll, his grandpa would never return. Mash tries to punch the knife, but just bleeds from its sheer power. The Grandmaster tells him that he can't do anything in this situation, but Mash uses his arm to stop the knife from moving down. He knows that the Headmaster can't keep something this big in existence for a long time, so he just needs to endure this until the Headmaster runs out of mana. The Headmaster is impressed, because he'd always been looking for a strong person who wants to help the weak, and he's finally found someone like that. The test is over and the headmaster apologizes for testing him for the final time. Mash accepts the apology and answers his question. If he had to face the headmaster to save his loved one, he'd knock the stuffing out of him with his fist. 
The rest of the council yell at his disrespectful reply, but the Grand Master welcomes him to the academy. That was the way Mash passed the entrance exam and became a student. During his first day in class, the teacher shows everyone how to use magic to open a lock. She tells the students to try it, so Mash decides to snap the lock in half. The teacher yells and says this is a magical school, but Mash says God is dead. His classmate thinks that Mash might be a troublesome student. A group of students overlook Mash's table and smile suspiciously. Mash's classmate hopes that they won't be roommates, but when he goes to his room, he doesn't see the door. The guy introduces himself as Finn, and Mash introduces himself back. He begins introducing his muscles, and Finn thinks this guy is a psycho. After meeting each other, Mash asks him how a student can become the divine visionary. Mash goes to explain that this is actually spy family, and they need to collect 10 gold coins while keeping their grades up. Mash thinks he's going to have difficulty here. To thank him for his information, Mash hands him a cream puff, and they celebrate their new friendship. A few weeks later, Mash had a broomstick challenge coming up, so he asked Finn if he could borrow his broomstick. Because instead of buying a broomstick, the bonehead bought a burdock accidentally. Finn is disappointed by Mash's stupidity, but allows him to borrow his broomstick. Mash calls him a great friend. During class, the teacher introduces everyone to their objective of the day, and everyone begins calling forth their broomstick to start flying. Mash looks at his broomstick and commands it to fly. It doesn't listen, so he continues commanding it to fly. A kid comes up and asks him how he isn't even able to fly a broomstick. So Mash strikes the ground with his foot to make the broomstick fly and then commands it to fly. <laughs> he thinks Mash was cheating, but Mash pretends like he has no idea what's going on. To save himself from embarrassment, he challenges Mash to a race on the broomstick. What Mash doesn't know is that this kid is the best broomstick rider in the entire academy. The teacher wonders how this klutz from yesterday's class is even able to fly, but she begins the race. Mash instantly finishes the race, and the guy wonders where he went wrong in his life. The teacher is impressed by his speed to set a world record. A mysterious man viewed this happening, and Finn knows the truth. Mash threw his broom at light speeds and jumped towards it to mount it in midair. This show is f***ing ridiculous. The student accuses Mash of cheating, but Mash tells him to face the facts already because he feels bad for him. Infuriated, the student is about to start yelling at Mash, but a magical ability restrains his mouth. The blonde kid comes and apologizes on his friend's behalf. His name is Cavill, and everyone in the class fears this guy. Cavill asks him if he would like to be friends and introduces himself, but Mash thinks he looks like a cabbage. Cavill tries to shake hands with him, but the teacher tells him to piss off already and stop interrupting class, so Cavill tells Mash to come see him here after school. Outside of class, Cavill beats up his friend for embarrassing him and not following orders, but at least he found a fun toy. While walking with Finn, Mash asks him who this Cavill is and why everyone is afraid of him. Finn reveals that his father is inside the Bureau of Magic, the most important entity in this world. Mash of course knew all about it, and Finn goes on to reveal that Cavill has close tied with the Vice Principal, so they will expel him if he defies Cavill. This is why everyone obeys him, and they're all scared. After school, Mash prepares cream puffs while wearing a pink apron because he's a giga chat. He wishes his grandpa would taste his nice white cream. Mash feels like he's forgetting something, but his cream puffs were too important. The next day in class, Mash's notebook is all torn and Cavill's lackeys laugh at him. Cavill approaches him and asks him why he didn't show up yesterday. Cavill reveals he's heard that Mash wants to become a divine visionary and promises to put a good word in for him. His only condition is to follow his orders, so Mash goes on to do every single thing that Cavill requests of him, and Finn notices. Still, his notebooks continue being torn up, and Mash asks Finn for his notebooks. Finn tries to reject, but Mash instantly teleports and takes his notebook and calls him a lifesaver. He hands him some cream puffs as a thank you, and then goes on to say that he's real glad to have a great guy like Finn as his friend. Mash continues obeying all of Cavill's orders, so Cavill pours water right in front of him and asks him to clean it up. Mash considers the situation, and decides to clean it up anyway. After a while, he is impressed by how well he cleaned it. While getting up, Finn's notebook drops from his coat. Cavill says he's getting bored of textbooks, so he commands Finn to burn Mash's clothes. Finn apologizes because he can't do this anymore, begging Cavill to end this. Cavill uses his magical abilities to restrain him, and makes him get on his knees to apologize. Mash walks to give Finn his notebook back, 
but then what he sees before him shocks him. Mash asks Cavill what he's doing, and he tells Mash that he's just getting an apology. Mash walks toward Finn and asks him if he's okay. Finn tells him that he's alright but begins crying, saying that he was the one who's been ruining his notebooks this entire time. He's been too scared to disobey, but when he heard him saying that he's been a great friend, he couldn't handle it anymore. He just wanted to apologize to Mash, and Cavill wishes he would have gotten such a sincere apology. Afterward, he reveals that he's going to dine with the vice principal and tells Mash to ditch this lackey before he misses his chance. Mash walks towards Cavill, grabbing his hair and smashing his head into the ground, knocking him unconscious. Cavill's friends are shocked, and Mash doesn't care if he's expelled. He then realizes that he does care if he's expelled. The vice principal appears, telling him that he witnessed this entire incident. It was a violent attack and both Mash and Finn will have to deal with the consequences. And since they're of different status, they will also have a different treatment. He will enlighten the idiots, but Mash rushes forward and gives him a fierce roundhouse kick. The vice principal vows to expel Mash right at this instant, and uses his magic wand. But Mash shoves his face with dirt. He goes on to dig the ground behind him, carrying him and tossing him into the pit, and begins burying him. If he can expel Mash at any time, then Mash can also bury whenever he wants. Even if he throws Mash in prison or cuts his body, he will crawl and bury him. This dude is a genuine chat. Later on, Mash is summoned before the headmaster. The principal asks him if he knows why he's here, but Mash instead asks him what came in the mail today. The headmaster asks him what came in the mail. These nuts? Ha! <laughs> <Got> he! <laughs> The headmaster gets clapped, but tells him that he can't go around burying the vice principal and punching Cavill. He has an order to expel him from the Bureau of Magic, the highest legal authority in this world. Divine visionaries are the ones running this bureau, which means Mash has done something unforgivable. The headmaster takes the paper and burns it, saying that it's more unforgivable to punish the ones who care. This is the reason he became the headmaster, to make sure this injustice doesn't continue passing. His only hope is that a person like Mash will one day become a divine visionary, but Mash reveals that he's already dedicated to becoming one. The headmaster loves this spirit and goes on to try to teach Mash how to become one, but after only 20 seconds of explanation, Mash passes out from information overload. The headmaster tries to wake him up and tells him to just do well in his classes to get as many coins as possible. At the same time, the headmaster promises that he will do everything to protect him from the Bureau of Magic. There is one more problem that Mash will inevitably have to face, but the headmaster is confident that Mash will be able to overcome it. This was the way the vice principal and Cavill were destroyed, but Mash became recognized by everyone at the academy. The next day, Mash walks with Finn while teaching him how to create a cream puff. A guy comes up and asks him if he would like to have a duelo so they can burn in this fire that we call life. What the f*** is up with these nutcases? His name is Tom, and all the girls go crazy over him. However, they think Mash has a mushroom haircut and make fun of his looks. Mash wonders what this guy has been smoking, so the guy reveals that they will be competing using their broomsticks like this is Harry Potter or some shit. Tom grabs Mash, telling him that they're counting on him to be at the game tomorrow. He tells him to shoot for the stars, because even if he misses, he'll land among his dreams. Mash realizes he's found someone denser than him. At the match the next day, Mash tries to tell them that he can't ride a broomstick. The match begins and everyone begins flying around to pass the ball. However, everyone in the stands realizes that Mash isn't flying, and begin throwing stuff at him and telling him to go home. Mash also wants to go home. The crowd begins thinking that the match is rigged while Mash stands on the ground. The captain approaches Mash. I swear this dude is a nutcase. The captain tells Mash that he swore to be number one, but Mash didn't. The captain tells him to quit being lazy, but Mash says he's not. He tells him to remember the mighty bamboo because it can survive any climate, and Mash right now is lacking the bamboo. Mash doesn't know what this guy is taking, but he sure wants some of it. He tried to explain the rules one more time, and tells him they're basically playing a Harry Potter game. The enemy team is almost 40 points ahead of them, and he hands Mash the broom, telling him that bamboos that can't fly are just shoots. Mash didn't know you could enchant mushrooms with magic, but this guy is something else. Tom's single objective is to put everything he has into this match, which is why he recruited Mash. He heads back out to and encourage Mash to start playing, but an opponent directly flies into Tom and knocks him off, claiming it was just an accident. They continue scoring while Tom is knocked out, and Tom thinks he might have broke a bone. 
Tom asks where their sportsmanship went, but the guy replies that he only cares about winning and calls them wusses. With the huge lead they have against them, Tom thinks this situation is pathetic, but wants Mash to know one thing. Winning doesn't matter, it's whether he gives it his all. The enemy team has a 50 points lead against Mash's team, but Mash picks up his broomstick and strengthens his grip. He launches towards the sky in an epic leap, and to everyone's surprise, he appears to be flying. He asks the teammates to pass the ball to him, but the entire field thinks he must be joking to try and throw the ball from this distance. The opponents begin flying towards him to steal the ball, but Mash prepares a strong throw and uses all of his might to make the ball fly past the opponents, scoring from beyond half field. However, they're still down 49 points and the time is almost up, but the ball begins flying back like a boomerang to Mash and he prepares another strike. His fingers strike with accurate precision to ensure the ball curves right back to him. He continues preparing strike after strike, and before everyone knows it, the score begins flying off the chart, and Lemon feels a citrusy liquid exiting her insides after climaxing. Sorry I meant her name is Lemon. The score reaches the limit on the board, and the winner is declared to be Mash's team for winning such a narrow comeback situation. After that, Mash came all over Lemon's back. Sorry I meant Mash won a silver coin. Finn congratulates Mash on getting a silver coin for breaking the world record, but Mash pledges he won't ever do that again. Tom approaches Mash with the most intense anger and hugs him for turning into one great bamboo. Mash still hasn't learned what type of magic is enhancing the bamboo this dude takes, but he still wants some of it. During that night, the news praises Mash for being the lead scorer in the match's world record win and the reader remembers Mash from the entrance exams. He opens his pendant, promising that Mash will be the next one he takes. The next day, Tom has taken another hit of his magical bamboo, and tells Mash to glisten more in the fire we call life. Lemon thinks he's been struggling in his classes, so she can teach him some anatomy after class and give him a hands-on lesson. What do you mean by that? Finn wishes he could be getting some attention from Lemon, but she tells Mash that she's enchanted her tongue with extra saliva. Sorry I meant citrus secreting substances because she's a lemon. She goes on to say that she can use her two giant melons to destroy his creature of the dark. Sorry I meant. Never mind. Just spam rip Finn in the comment section because poor dude is getting c***ed. The fake fans will never expect it. Mash asks Finn for some help, but he's already climaxed from all the things Lemon was saying, and Mash thinks he's a traitor. Lance approaches them and asks to join the conversation. But Tom has never seen someone who possesses two scars on his face. Lemon thinks that he must have a giant eggplant, but she only cares about Mash's lemon juicer even if it doesn't fit. Mash doesn't want him to join the conversation because he's a stranger, but Lance tells him that he wants to do something fun. Mash wonders if he means hide and seek. Lance takes out an ancient bottle, and it instantly sucks Mash's friends inside, shrinking and trapping them. Lemon is worried for being trapped with two guys who will squeeze all her citrus out. Lance turns away, saying to meet in the forest if he wants to see his friends again. Deep inside the forest, Mash faces off with Lance and asks him why he's done this. He reveals the silver coins, and tells him that they will gamble for them, and Tom is worried about the two lines on his face. In this world, the majority of people have a single line to indicate they can use magic, but about 1 in 100,000 people have a double line and they're considered chosen by magic itself. Lance knows that Mash will accept no matter what, and that he will likely lose this match since he always prioritizes someone else over his own goals. Meanwhile, Finn is losing his mind for being in a closed space with Lemon. Mash tells him to hurry up and get on with it, and Lance takes out his wand. He begins by casting a spell towards the ground, creating numerous circles to change the structure of the field. Mash's grandpa is worried about Mash, but Brad is worried about his profits. They hear an explosion in the distance, and the entire cliff explodes before them. Mash thinks flashy performances are unnecessary, and launches towards Lance. However, Lance uses his gravity spell once more, and crushes Mash to the ground. He continues strengthening the gravity spell, telling Mash that scum like him can spend their entire life rolling in the ground. Mash tries to stand up, but Lance says it's futile to get up. However, Mash strikes his fist in the ground and says he can do more than enough without standing. He pulls the roots from the ground to destroy the earth beneath Lance, shocking him. Mash asks him if he also likes rolling on the ground, and lunges towards him at sonic speed. Lance tries to counterattack by casting his gravity spell, but Mash's footwork allows him to maintain balance and strike before it affects him. His speed has increased, and he nearly strikes Lance down but only manages to destroy his pendant. 
He opens it and sees a girl in there. That's not ridiculous. That's not ridiculous to say that. Lance reveals that he's not actually Lolly Khan. He's a cis Khan. He asks Mash to give it back and asks him what the most precious thing is in this world. Mash thinks it's cream puffs, but Lance says he's wrong. He says love, but Lance says he's wrong. After a while, Lance is angry that Mash can't answer such an obvious question. So Mash asks him what he thinks the most important thing is. Lance points the bottle off the cliff, telling him that even if Mash tries to reach for it, he's going to attack him mid-air to destroy him. This is the resolve of Lance's will to save his sister. He remembers the times when she would heal him after getting into a fight for saving a bullet kid. Even though he was dumb for taking the beating, his sister loves how he's clumsy and kind like that. And this brings joy to Lance. But a few weeks later, he ran to his sister's room after finding out she has an incurable disease. Within five years, her magic crest will disappear completely, and they will have to hand her over to the government. His parents are disgusted that they gave birth to such a child. But when Lance heard those words, he screamed at his parents, saying they're no longer his parents. For his sister, Anna, he'll make sure to overthrow this entire system and become divine visionary to change the perception of his sister to this world. He throws the bottle down and uses his magical ability to speed up the fall. He looks at Mash who's doing stretches and gets in a track race position. He says he's going to be using hamstring magic and his entire body's muscular system enlarges. Before he could even find where Mash disappeared off to, Mash appears behind him. Lance is shocked, but is still determined to save his sister. However, Mash tells him to stop this because he believes Lance is actually a good guy. The bottle was empty after all, and Mash dashes to search Lance and takes the actual bottle. Lance wonders why Mash would give up the opportunity to win silver coins, but Mash says he's too clumsy to make rational decisions about everything. Hearing those words reminds him of the stuff his sister had told him, and Lance feels absolutely defeated. He walks off and honors his bet, giving Mash his second silver coin. Mash wonders what might have happened if he won, but Finn thanks him for saving him. The nutcase is still on his bamboo, and Lemon tells Mash she's going to let him suck her lemon juices so hard. While Lance walks away, Mash thinks he was a pretty good guy, but wishes he didn't release his friends from the bottle. In the Easton Magic Academy, we have yet another Harry Potter ripoff. There are three dorms that each student is assigned to. Alder for courage and conviction, Orca for wisdom and willingness, and finally, Lang for ability and ambition. They're rivals against one another, and in the Alder dorm, Mash stares at his silver coin. He has learned that five silver coins create a gold coin, but he's only managed to earn two. <laughs> Finn tells him to quit constantly thinking about squeezing lemons insides, and calls him a meathead because Lemon wants to give his meat some head. Mash thinks that today is a nice peaceful day, but Finn realizes that they've completely forgotten about their potions assignment. Mash tries to calm him down, telling him to just eat some of his white cream. Sorry I meant trying to give him a cream puff. Finn is scared he will fail this academy but Mash couldn't care less. Lance comes in. As the top student, he's already finished the assignment, so he lectures them on being responsible and being ashamed of themselves. Mash comes up and says, I'm about to end this man's whole career. Lance goes on to show them that they're going to pass their assignment by ripping off Harry Potter even more. And Mash is excited the authors were genius enough to be original. While the Mandragora cries, Lance uses his spell to make it sleep so it can become a potion ingredient. He tells them to try, but while Finn uses the same magical spell, the Mandragora doesn't respond. Mash tells him that he'll show him how it's done, but when he casts the spell, it begins screaming even louder. Finn wonders how someone so incapable could exist, but Lance says to just focus on concentrating his magic on a single point. While casting the spell, the Mandragora begins falling asleep, and Finn is happy that he was able to accomplish the task. He wonders how Mash is doing. The giant plant screams and is ready to crush Mash, but with his agility, he evades and bitch slaps the plant until it passes out. To create the compound, they all get in zesty aprons, and Lance demonstrates the way to create the potion they've been after. Finn thinks this is impossible, but Mash thinks he knows exactly what to do. Lance calls him zesty like his apron for always making white creamy liquid food. 
he thinks it's impossible for him to mess up if they do it together, so he watches his every move. But Mash manages to somehow make a cream puff once again. Lance has no idea how this guy is so useless, and Mash agrees. Still, Lance needs to get into the Bureau of Magic, and since Mash was superior to him in combat, he promises to never let anyone take his coins away. Mash promises that it will never happen. Meanwhile, the all-dorm off-campus class will start soon, and the headmaster wonders if Mash will be alright. In the hallway, this show decides to rip off Naruto, and Naruto bumps into three kids. They tell him to watch where he's going, but next thing they knew, he used his magic jutsu to destroy all of them, calling them side characters in the wrong anime. In a secret room, a man with two scars throws the silver coins on the ground, saying that Lang will rule the school, and commands his subordinates to steal all the coins from other dorms. Mash enjoys eating the white creamy liquid from the cream puff. The day of the all-dorm class arrives, and they hear Naruto yelling that he's the main character. His name may be Don, but that's boring so we'll keep calling him Naruto. Mash thinks he's a weirdo, but Naruto calls him a mushroom head and says he looks like a side character. However, Lemon comes in, screaming Mash's name and says that she wants him to cream her puff already. Naruto spits on him in the least non-chad manner and says he will kill him. He hates this world and thinks it's ridiculous how half the population is women, but he hasn't had a single one fall for him. The only reason this happens is because people like Mash are ruining the system, so Naruto swears that he will become a divine visionary to rid this world of hot guys. Lemon is still telling Mash to cream her puff, and Mash thinks his white liquid is tasty. Naruto tells them to quit ignoring him since his ego is being crushed, but the teacher materializes in front of them to explain the rules. In this class, they will exterminate the scorpions hiding throughout the forest. The strongest scorpions may be dangerous, but defeating them will earn them silver coins, and he tells them to head off now. As they prepare to head off, a mysterious man grabs onto Mesh and tells him to stop thinking he's hot stuff just because of a fluke in a match. He steps backward and sends a stone pillar to destroy Mash's insides. The guy tells him to get up already, and Mash gives him a cold glance. He walks off and tells Mash to make sure he's bowing that low next time they meet. Mash is about to destroy him, but Lance tells him to hold back since this guy is known for his misconduct against students and teachers. He only hasn't been expelled since his magic ability is high, but Mash is glad that his cream puff hasn't been mashed because he wants to mash Lemon's insides and cream her puff. They walk together in the forest, but after a while, Lance notices that Mash is gone. He had zoned out like a bonehead, but hears Naruto yelling that he will destroy Mash. They lock eyes and Naruto screams in fear, so Mash bitch slaps him and tells him to be quiet already. Naruto is prepared to destroy Mash for his disrespect, but they hear a woman screaming in the distance. A guy yells that he will make her regret her actions, and Naruto unleashes Explom, an ability that burns the guy to ashes. Naruto tells him to never raise his hand against a girl, and the girl thanks him with a smile. Naruto climaxes but tries to play it like nothing just happened. He turns around and tries to be charming, but when she grabs his hand, the simp climaxes once more. She calls him so strong and manly, and he climaxes again. Deep in the forest, the mysterious guy has destroyed one of the boss scorpions and thinks it's time to face off with Mash. Meanwhile, Mash is eating his white creamy puff while Naruto has a white creamy pie inside his pants. The girl gets closer and bumps her knee into him, and he climaxes once more. The girl wonders how much of a virgin this guy is. He asks her what she said, but she tells him that she just thought he was so wonderful and manly and that he's really wonderful. He climaxes again, but the post-nut clarity of this one sends him to a different dimension. He begins banging his head on the ground, and the girl is glad that her magic spell is working just as intended. Now she will take care of the mushroom head, but when she approaches him, Mash doesn't flinch even a little. He may be into lemon, but Mash is zesty, so she tries to strengthen her magic even more and uses the trifecta of sound, sight, and touch to make Mash fall for her. However, he tells her he's in love with cream puffs, and the girl wonders how this man isn't falling for her. Naruto's hormones have recovered, and he asks her why she appears to be sad. The girl reveals that there's a man who's been bullying her all this time, and begins crying because she doesn't know what to do. Naruto activates simp mode once again and promises that he will beat the guy up for her, but just then, Giant stone crystals appear from the earth. Naruto says that he will end him right here, but the man thinks he's the biggest cringe out here. 
In an instant, he casts his Explom ability, but even though the man evades, he sees the sky filling up with his fireballs. Naruto launches his all-out assault, even sending a giant flare towards the man and tells him to die twice. Meanwhile, Lemon and Finn beg Lance to keep them safe, but Lance is more worried about Mash being targeted by that white-haired guy. Naruto thinks that he was an easy opponent after all, but the fog settles and the crystals appear to have been saving him from all the blasts. He launches a crystal to crush Naruto's stomach, and the debris knocks Mash's cream puff out of his hand. Naruto is enraged, and Mash is about to absolutely annihilate the man in front of him. Naruto faces off against Silva, but wonders how he's going to endure Silva's magical abilities. He thinks the mushroom head is going to be useless in this battle, but Silva calls him a letdown. However, he's willing to offer him a chance. If he can endure just five hits of his magic, he'll leave the girl alone, and will even go as far as betting a silver coin. Naruto hesitates, but accepts the challenge. The girl is worried that he's going to have a serious injury, but Naruto thinks he's climaxed to her five times already so it's only fair that he takes five blows. Silva tells him that he's not the only one, because he's also challenging Mushroom Head, but Naruto says that Mash has nothing to do with it and decides to take all of the blows for Mash as well. Naruto gets in position to take the blows, but after just a single iron fist, he's already coughing up blood. As Silva taunts him to give up already, Naruto holds his ground and Silva continues striking him down until he's been hit a total of nine times. His consciousness begins to fade, but he's determined to not give up. The tearful story of his crush being bullied motivates him, so even if he may look like an idiot, and even if he thinks that he does, he won't doubt anything she's told him, because her tears were telling the truth. Silva is impressed with Naruto for making it this far, but for his last hit, he promises to make it an extra big one. He casts his wand and sends a giant iron fist towards Naruto, knocking him to the ground. Silva thinks it's a pity, but Naruto holds his ground once more, and Silva is shocked this guy is still walking. As Naruto gets closer, however, he collapses, and Silva calls him a complete moron and imbecile. Of course he's no longer able to stand, the blows crushed all of his core organs and muscles. Realizing this is trouble, Naruto begs Mash to run away with the girl because he promises to make everything work. Silva casts another iron fist, and Naruto continues begging Mash to leave. Just then, the girl reveals she's been charming him with magic this entire time. Silva tells her that she's being too nice. After all, this guy is completely delusional and thinks he's the main character of an anime, and starts laughing at him until Mash throws his white creamy puff in his mouth. He says they've gone too far, and tells Silva to bring on the 10-hit challenge. Meanwhile, Lemon is starting to have withdrawals because her puff hasn't been creamed by Mash. Even with Mash's strength, Lance is worried since there are different types of magic users. White mages excel at leadership while red mages excel at combat. This entire time, Mash has been battling white mages, but red mages past the first year, especially with double lines, are likely to surpass even Mash's strength. Silva thinks it's quite a statement coming from Mash, as it pisses him off there are people like Naruto. It's Silva's mission to completely mess up people like that and destroy every bit of their confidence. Some of Naruto's blood has ended up on his clothes, so he picks him up to slam him down. In that instant, Mash rushes forward to punch Silva away, but his reflexes allow him to cast an iron fist that manages to scratch Mash. Silva laughs hysterically at Mash's arrogance. He summons his iron fists and launches one towards Mash's gut, following with multiple hits to try and knock Mash out. The largest iron fist rushes towards Mash to end him, but with his bare fist, he holds it off and destroys it. He begins clenching his fist and activates tricep magic. Silva hasn't ever heard of that lunatic magic and sends a flurry of iron fists towards Mash that he evades one by one. The iron fists continue rushing towards Mash, but he destroys every single one of them until he finally reaches Silva. With all of the blood coming out, Silva struggles to speak and Mash continues approaching him. However, with all of the iron fists approaching Mash, he simply clenches his fist, sets up his footwork, and readies a strike that destroys every single one of them while delivering a devastating blow to his stomach. As he flew backwards, Silva coughed up blood and realized there's absolutely no chance for him to win. All the strength in his body has disappeared, and he wonders who this guy is. Before destroying him, however, Mash walks away and goes to sit on a tree, saying that it's been two punches. He asks him if he's going to endure ten of those punches since he's the greatest after all. While walking towards him, Mash asks if he can go for a third hit, and Silva's mind is crushed. One more hit would definitely isekai him, so he tries to desperately come up with a plan. 
As he tries to think, the earth begins to quake and a giant scorpion with a star-shaped stone appears. It's worth more than a single silver coin, and he knows that it can distract Mash enough for him to escape. This is his opportunity. He needs some milk! <laughs> Mash apologizes for being busy right now, and the stone falls to the ground. Silva has realized that it's over for him, but Mash asks him if he would like to call it quits since he feels bad for him. His head snaps towards the girl like an owl. She begins crying and pretending to apologize, and Mash wonders if he heard that right. With fake tears, she apologizes and says she's truly sorry. But Mash comes and hugs her from behind, telling her that it's alright, because he believes equal rights mean equal fights. And I bet my bars hit you out of sight, but not as hard as Naruto beating his meat to lemon at night. <laughs> After their battle ended, Lemon asks if she can cure Mash's injuries with her citrus juices. Naruto hears how Lemon wants her insides to be mashed by Mash while he squeezes all her juices out with his lemon juicer and creams her puff. What the f is this show? He sees how much she cares about him, and remembers his crush calling him a cringe. Mash has noticed how down Naruto looks, and Lemon approaches him, asking him if he's okay. The simp climaxes yet again, and Lemon thinks he's weird and screams for help. Naruto apologizes to Mash for getting him caught up with his problems, but Mash says it's not like him. Naruto tells him to shut his mouth and give him a break because he tried so hard to squeeze those words out of his mouth. Mash says that the only thing he's going to break is Lemon's back while squeezing his white creamy puff onto her mouth. Lance has discovered that they were targeted this entire time. He's overheard that Lang is hunting for coins and are mainly targeting Mash's dorm. They're a dorm made up of the highest elite students who strive to make sure no one else will become a divine visionary. It's starting, the great war for the coins against the dorms, the Magilupus. Mash thinks the Magilupus sounds like an arc he could have created back when he was 12. In his pocket, a golden light glows, and Mash takes it out to see that he's finally got a golden coin. Naruto wishes he was that successful, and Mash shines it brighter in his eyes. This is the first time Mash has heard about the different dorms, but then remembers how much more they ripped off Harry Potter. The teacher had instructed everyone to touch the skeleton so it can select a dorm for them. The skeleton has never made a mistake in selecting the right dorm for a student. Next was Mash's turn and he grabbed onto the skeleton, However, all of his thoughts were filled with cream puffs. Mash apologizes for squeezing his bone so hard. The skeleton wonders how such a guy can only be thinking about cream puffs and nothing else, especially with that ugly mushroom head. This is the first time in several centuries that he's been stumped, so he tries investigating him once more. But cream puffs are the only thing in his mind. The skeleton decides to recite the recipe for cream puffs from ChatGPT and arrives at the statement that cream puff lovers go to Alder. This was how they ripped off Harry Potter, and the guys realized that Mash was the weirdo this entire time. Lance explains that Lang's elite are a group of seven of the most distinguished students in the world. Now that Mash has a gold coin, he needs to be extra careful in keeping his distance from Lang and not getting lost. Mash promises that he will. Well that was all bullshit. Mash is lost in school while he walks around, but stumbles on the Lang dorm. He wonders if he should push or pull the door open, and this difficult decision troubles him. Inside the room, Silva begs for forgiveness from Lord Abel. However, not only was he defeated, but he even lost a silver coin, so he begs for a second chance. Abel says he never gave him a chance since he didn't expect anything out of him. Humans worthy of turning this world around must be chosen individuals, he states. He's collecting coins to create a world free of impurities, and Silva's body begins transforming. He calls him a pathetic wretch because he's going to be living his life like a worthless doll, but at least he will no longer have to worry about such things. Silva's body walks and stands next to the rest of the dolls. Abel tells his mother that he's going to create a world free of impurities. Mash breaks the door and walks in, asking the man if he knows that he's talking to a doll. The Lang leader remembers that Mash is the first year student with the gold coin, and asks him why he wants to become a divine visionary. Mash's only wish is to live peacefully with his parents, and Abel finds that admirable. However, he calls him misguided and says he lacks the metal necessary to be a deity-like being. Abel, on the other hand, will return the world to its rightful form. The only reason humans have flourished is because the strong pillage and devour the weak. Humans are beasts by nature, so even in human society, they must continue having the superior beings destroy everything of the weak. Mash thinks he gets it. He thinks Abel also just wants a cream puff so he can live peacefully. 
Abel considers those words as hostility, but will allow him to leave peacefully in exchange for his gold coin. Mash rejects his request, but Abel tells him he has no right to refuse, sending one of the puppets towards Mash. With his superior agility, Mash strikes the doll down and rips the control threads, freeing Silva from the inside. He tells Abel that it wasn't much of a challenge, but a bigger puppet grabs onto Mash. The strength of the puppet makes him wonder if it's been pumping iron, but the doll takes the coin from his jacket and tosses it to Abel. Afterward, it smashes Mash against the pillar, and Abel thanks him for his cooperation. Bash stands up, telling Abel that he's not much of a challenge and nearly stomps Silva to death. Realizing he's unconscious, he decides to take him to the nurse's office instead of worrying about the coin, and promises that he will never lose against him. All of the Lang members are shocked, and Mash exits the room like a giga chat. Abel wonders why he's so overconfident, and feels like something was off. He notices one of the puppets was missing a button, and in his hand, he's holding the button instead of the coin. Strawberry Lemon realizes she witnessed the impossible. In an instant, the puppet had flung the coin, but Mash bit off the button and sent it flying with such precision that it hit the coin back in mid-air and allowed him to suck it back into his lungs, leaving Abel in shock. Back at the nurse's office, Silva wakes up and is shocked that he's a human again, but sees Mash crunching and wonders what this nutcase is doing. He asks Mash why he saved a person who was supposed to be his enemy. Mash gets up and tries speaking, but nearly bites his tongue off, so he decides to leave and save himself the embarrassment. Inside Mash's dorm, Lance and Naruto are having a staring contest. Lance asks him why he went from Naruto to Naru Simp with his new hairstyle, and Naruto says that he got this makeover to squeeze Lemon's juice out. He thinks that Lance's face is in the 70th percentile, and with his height, he has life on easy mode, so he says his dissatisfaction is at 500% and tells him to get out of his room. Finn reminds them that they're in his room, and Naruto starts break dancing. Lance tells him that he hates ugly asses like him and wants to eradicate him. Naruto accepts the challenge, and they're ready to destroy poor Finn's room. Mash breaks the door and tells them to take it outside before destroying his room. Naruto takes out a gift for Finn since it's his first time visiting, and he sees that his gift is a lemon-flavored tea, and thinks this dude's messed up in the head. Naruto wishes he had a girlfriend while Mash eats his lemon cream puff. Lance tells him to stop thinking about devouring lemon, and Finn wonders why he has to deal with these three morons. Lemon pops in and sees four men and begs them not to run a train on her. She realizes that she's just a lemon, and remembers that eggplants don't get along with lemons. What? She takes them to the magic scale and shows them that Lang's dorm has 15 coins while the other dorms only have one. They've been stealing coins since the beginning of the year, and because of their blood purist exclusionary ideology, they're going to create the most evil divine visionary. Naruto thinks that he loves lemon sour flavor instead of a sweet orange. Lemon begs Mash to cream her puff already, and Naruto screams in anger. Mash, Lance, and Naruto promise to bring them down, and the five Power Rangers have assembled. Inside the owl farm, Mash wonders why his mushroom head ended up here. The principal needed to reprimand him for god knows what, so now the owls think his dumb ass hair is their nest. Lance appears and tells Mash that he'll be accompanying him in case Lang decides to tail him. In the forest, two of the Lang lackeys walk together. One of them says that once time passes, it never returns. Well, no f***ing shit. Mash continued trying to clean the hut, but the owls kept messing with his head. From underneath Mash, a water puddle formed and a giant shuriken nearly slashed Lance's head off. It's the Lang Lackeys, and they introduce themselves as the Magilupus's sixth fang, Allor, and the seventh fang, Answer. They're here to battle for the gold coins, but poor Mash is about to drown since he's never swam before in his life. Allor transforms into a shark and dives inside the puddle, and Answer says that he will tell Lance something important. In a fight, there is always a winner and a loser. Lance wonders why his school is filled with morons who are constantly taking the mighty bamboo. Answer launches his shuriken towards Lance, and as he's about to retaliate with his magic weapon, he notices one of the owls in his way. His hesitation causes him to be slashed, so he tries to attack once more, but remembers his sister will be angry with him if he hurts the poor owls. The Siskon's been smitten and Answer releases two of his giant shurikens towards Lance. Seeing their trajectory would harm the owls, he decides to take the blow head on. Answer recognizes that Lance is the eldest son of the prestigious Crown family, but can't believe he's much weaker than he expected. Lance struggles to think of a way to win this fight and activates his Gravile, 
but his magic is so weak that only a shovel falls. Answer thinks he's had enough of dealing with the weak, so he launches his shuriken triple towards Lance. In the last moment, however, he notices something is off and sees that the owls are in one spot. Lance activates his gravile, crushing his shurikens in an instant. When he first casted the spell, he intentionally targeted the shovel to open the owl's feed and lure them all to a single spot. Hanser's anger grows with Lance's mocking actions, so he launches his ultimate shuriken, but Lance activates his gravile, crushing him and destroying his shuriken. Answer wonders how a double liner has an overwhelming difference in power, but Lance goes on to reveal his secret behind his ultimate strength. He's going to tell him something important. To save his sister, his determination will destroy any opponent in his way. He is the ultimate Siskon. Inside the sea field, Allor is ready to hunt Mash, but a torpedo rushes past him, and he wonders what he just witnessed. He looks around and sees Mash flashing right next to him and wonders how he's swimming. Mash comes by and says he can swim better than he thought, so he's grateful to the shark for teaching him how to swim. Realizing Mash is faster than any shark on this planet, he casts his ultimate ability, Sea Shark Evolution, and thinks nobody can stop him in this form. However, Mash begins stroking deep into the shark's insides to penetrate him. They defeat both of the enemies, and Lance takes their coin away. If this is the power of the 6th and 7th, Mash thinks they can handle them with ease. However, a person enters the room and flickers past them, telling them not to jump to conclusions. Lance tries activating his gravile, but his magic has no effect. The man tells them to calm down because he's only here for his allies, but Mash rushes with inhuman speeds towards him, saying that he's quite menacing. Their opponent flashes before Mash's punch can land, and apologizes for seeming menacing. He takes his allies and tells them that they will meet again soon, bidding them a good day. Mash realizes this is going to be harder than they thought. The man's mask crushes, and he realizes that Mash's speed without magic indicates one thing. They have the same type. The mysterious second fang faced off against the master of the orcas. But after he activated his ultimate ability, the second fang finished him off with ease, and his body was transformed into a doll to patrol the school. The next morning, Lance wanted to locate the Lang dorms so he could take their coins away, but he wondered if Mash was really listening to him this entire time. Since it's been a month after Mash was admitted, Lance handed him his dorm's robe, and the moron struggled to put it on. He noticed the logo on the back, and Lance told him that it's not a logo, it's a mark. He hopes that this will make Mash more conscious that he belongs to a dorm. But before he could finish, Lemon barged in and begged him to cream her puff. Mash asked her to wait because he needs to finish baking his cream puffs, but she screamed that she needed her puff creamed. He tried telling her that his cream puffs are tastier than her citrus juices, but she told him that she needs her juices to be squeezed with his lemon squeezer. Inside the infirmary, Tom looked like he finally took too much bamboo and asked them how they're bambooing. Mash thought this guy's brain was finally fried, and Lemon wondered why he looks like he's been spending 15 years in prison. He tells them that he fried his brain so hard that he has no memory of what happened. All of the energy has been sucked out of his body, and after collapsing, he remembers dreaming that he was trapped inside a dark box. Even though he was conscious, he couldn't speak and felt like his dream lasted for hours. Mash feels bad for him, so he offers him a cream puff, but Lemon tells him that they should save creaming her puff for later. She wondered if he was alright, but Bamboo Man said he could no longer use any of his magical energy almost like it's been sucked out of him. Lance thinks it's odd, especially considering all the other patients here who have lost their magic, and all of it conveniently happened when the headmaster left for the Bureau of Magic. Lemon feels afraid so she hands Mash Creamy, her lemon cream puff because she wants her insides creamy. He wonders what's up with the ribbon, and she punches him in the face because anime girls make no sense. She tells him not to do anything risky, and to keep it with him at all times so he can use it whenever he has built up desires. Mash thinks she also took too much bamboo, but Lemon tells him that she wants him to hold it even when he sleeps so he can cream her puff in his dreams. After the dorm's lights went out, Lance was sure that the Magilupus are behind these events, but Mash asked him why he's being a white girl in a horror movie and walking towards danger at night. As they walked around, they found Lemon's back turned towards them, and Naruto climaxed after seeing her back. He tried approaching her, but Lance told him to wait because something was off. Her body began moving in a very inhuman manner, and she turned around in an instant towards them, but they had all managed to stay hiding. Naruto thinks this is the worst possible scenario, because he just climaxed even though she didn't have eyes. Stop it! Get some help! Finn sees that she's walking somewhere, but they eventually make it to a dead end. Finn hears a creaking and wonders if the rest heard it, 
but Naruto tells him to quit being ridiculous. He hears it again, and Naruto also hears it. They hug on to Mash for protection, but Lance tells them to calm down because it's just a spell. Using his Disclose ability, he uncovers the secret door hidden underneath them, but says the magic sealing this door is far beyond his abilities. Naruto uses his machine gun Explom to destroy the door, but without a single scratch left on it, he loses hope. Mash is out for another Giga Chad move to break this show's logic. With the armor suit he brought, he bangs on the floor to knock the door up, and places the sword against the armor to create a lever. He then smashes his foot towards the bone of the sword, launching the door into the sky and destroying all of the ceilings. Lance says Lemon is inside, but hearing that makes Naruto climax, because he wants to know what Lemon's insides are like. Mash stares at the creamy she created for him, remembering her asking him not to do anything risky. But he apologizes, thinking that he will have to break his promise. As they walk deeper into the lair, he thinks this is definitely another Harry Potter rip-off, but Naruto tells him to stop single-handedly ruining this show, causing Mash to get really bummed out. As they walk deeper, Lance realizes that there was a reason for Lang choosing this hideout, and they eventually make it into an arena. A man materializes in front of them, and tells them that this is an ancient dueling field. He's here at the Third Fang's request to eradicate intruders like them and provokes them to challenge him for their coins. Lance is ready to face him off, but Naruto wants to take care of it. He hates good-looking guys, and the guys cheer him on. Naruto asks him if he has a fan club, and after he says that he does, Mash knows that there's a jealous rant incoming. Naruto begins screaming that he'll end him, and the guys are glad that their assumptions were right. The man asks Naruto if he's jealous of his attractiveness, and Naruto screams that he is. Hearing his dumbass screaming, he realizes that Naruto lacks both brains and attractiveness, and summons his rose whip to begin the battle. Inside the Bureau of Magic, the leader apologizes for bringing the principal all this way, but their issue is urgent. Six of Death Row's most notorious inmates had escaped and slaughtered all of the prison guards, and they were assisted by Innocent Zero. Meanwhile, Naruto launches his Explom ability, but the Rose Whips neutralized it with ease and slashed towards Naruto. His opponent wonders how he was able to beat Silva, but Naruto remembers just getting the crap beat out of him instead. He thinks it's a shame how a guy like Silva was a double liner and says he's a lot tougher than Silva is. Naruto likes hearing that, because he definitely won't lose, and casts his Explom bomb towards him. Eight traps become set next to him, and Naruto tells him to watch his step because all of them have five times the usual power. The unnamed man thinks he would never fall for it, but Naruto thinks an idiot like him will definitely walk into them. His opponent wonders how he would ever fall for that trick, especially since he can attack from a distance. He casts his Rose Whip, and while Naruto tries to retaliate with his Explom, the vines neutralize the attacks and grab onto him, throwing his wand out of his hand. The vines grow thorns to immobilize his body, and the man thinks that Naruto really is an ugly idiot, so he will end this fight with his next attack, and sends him dropping towards the ground. Naruto tells him that he never said anything about making him step on the marks, and one of the spells activates, destroying the man's wand. Explom Bomb is nothing more than a time bomb, so he deceived him and went on to use the rest of his time bombs, attempting to incinerate him to smithereens. Naruto says that no one should ever judge a book by its cover and tells them to bring on the next guy. However, his opponent remains standing in an attractive pose after being defeated, but thinks he doesn't mind it. As the others walk towards him, the ground begins to sink them downwards. Mash begs someone to save his baby, at least this one. Finn sinks with Naruto and Naruto realizes these guys are even more of a nut job than he is. After sinking into the ground, Lance realizes their plan all along was to split them up, and feels an intense energy appearing. The man tells Lance that being scummy is inexcusable, and introduces himself as the third fang of Magilupus, worth metal. Naruto and Finn land in their location, and Finn runs to latch onto Naruto for protection. Strawberry Lemon thinks this fight is going to be easy and introduces herself as the fifth fang, Love Cute, while the fourth fang introduces himself as Milo Genius. Finn thinks they're done for and thanks his parents for bringing him into this world. Naruto tells him not to give up before the match has even started, because he will definitely destroy any girl who pretends to be an off-brand lemon. Nash falls onto the ground and wonders where everyone has gone off to. Torches begin to light up the hallway, and Mash recognizes him from the other day. The man apologizes for not introducing himself. He is the second Fang, Abyss Razor, and hopes that Mash will remember him. The way Mash moved that day was impressive, and he noticed that he was unable to use magic. Mash stutters and says that it's not necessarily true, 
but the guy tells him not to worry, because just like him, he is a person who is abhorred by this world. Even though Mash has his reasons for being here, Abyss also has his reasons for fighting. Mash tells him that he will beat the stuffing out of him with everything he's got. This was the beginning of their off-brand tournament arc. Mash prepares to face off against Abyss Razor and leaps towards him to deliver a spinning kick, knocking his opponent backwards. The second Fang dashes towards him and in an instant cuts his shoulder, saying that Mash can never win. He activates his Accelerate's ability and dashes towards Mash at blinding speeds, wounding his body numerous times. Their difference in speed is incomparable, and Abyss promises that he will never go easy on him. However, Mash says none of it matters, none of it. Abyss realizes that Mash is the type to live in peace with his family, and finds that idea revolting. They're similar in that aspect, but he thinks that Mash has been blessed with whoever has been around him, so he will use it against him. Inside a magical prison, he shows Lemon's magic being drained. In about 30 minutes, all of her magic will be drained, and she will lose the mark on her face. He wonders if it'll make Mash happy to have someone just like him but Mash promises that he will rip his mask to pieces after hearing that. He thinks his words are quite obstinate, whatever the fuck that means, and promises that he won't hold back. His arrows begin to overflow the field, and he activates his Accelerate's sphere, vanishing towards Mash to deliver countless lethal wounds. As his barrage of attacks continues, his sword pierces through Mash's abdomen, and tomato sauce begins pouring out. Abyss commends him on his bravery to the very end, but notices that he can't pull his sword out. Mash tells him that he's fallen for his trap, saying his abs are toned, and delivers a devastating head smash, destroying Abyss's mask. He catches a glimpse of his eyes and sees the redness. He wonders if he's been taking the bamboo. Abyss wonders if he knows what this eye means, but Mash says that he doesn't and apologizes. Abyss tells him not to apologize and reveals that this is the evil eye of the devil. It temporarily disables all magic in this world upon its gaze, including his own. Mash gets bummed out because his special ability has no effect on him, but Abyss says it's okay. Throughout his whole life, he's been feared by everyone, including his own parents, but thinks that someone as blessed as Mash wouldn't understand. He activates his ultimate ability, accelerates second, and the arrows begin to cast a special sphere around Mash, a force field. This type of power is reserved only for the double line magic users, it is called the second. An arrow is cast towards Mash, and Abyss flickers towards him. Without even being able to complete his motion, Abyss gouges Mash's body seven times. In this force field, everyone's speed is decreased, and it is bestowed upon Abyss. So with his speed, he begins penetrating Mash's body with his hard sword, and promises that he will finish soon. As he prepares to finally finish Mash off, Mash strengthens his footing and sends his fist towards the ground, crushing the earth around him. Even with his strength, Abyss thinks this attack is futile, but Mash lunges towards him and destroys his sword. This must have been his plan all along, Abyss realizes, as he split the floor to narrow his movements. Before he could pull back to regain his balance, Mash prevents him from moving with his foot and begins to activate full muscle magic, Hurricane Rush. With all of his speed, he throws a punch towards Abyss's abdomen, shattering his force field. With his speed restored, he sprints and launches towards Abyss, kicking him with his glute magic, sending him flying away. Mash sprints towards his enemy. But Abyss activates his accelerates and rushes towards Mash with his broken sword. But after they make contact, Mash holds the sword with his bare hand and activates forearm magic to kick him into the wall. He activates hamstring magic to kick him away and then engages his pectorales to punch him towards the floor. As Abyss flies backwards, he kicks him with his ellipsos. And for his final attack, he activates his erector spine attack and suplexes Abyss to the ground. As he laid on the ground, Abyss couldn't help but think what his life would be like if he was born normal. When he was a child, his eye manifested, and his parents were filled with shock. He countered everything the god had gifted their world, possessing the evil eye of the devil. Just like the markless children, he was cast away by this world, and his parents locked him in a cell for years, only coming to give him a meager meal. His suffering continued until one day, his parents tried to end his miserable life. He was nothing but a child, but he came to the realization that he should have never been born. The only person in this world who needed him was Lord Abel, but even if he was just a tool, he's sad he couldn't even meet that expectation. Once again, he felt like he was unwanted by everyone, 
After hearing his story, Mash thinks that Abyss was right, that he was truly blessed and couldn't relate to Abyss's struggles. However, he still wishes for them to become friends, but Abyss says he envies that arrogance of his. It's impossible for them to ever become friends, because with his eyes, Mash will inevitably shift his attitude towards him. Still, to thank him for his kindness, he warns him not to advance any further. The power he saw that day against Abel was nowhere near his true powers, but Mash says that he's going to give him a good whooping. As he walked away, he revealed that he would never turn against him, no matter how the world viewed him, and no matter what others thought. He promises that he would never change his attitude towards him. That's how he was raised, Mash explains, and wishes for them to eat cream puffs together next time. Abyss laughs, thinking that Mash is the strangest man he's ever met. Deep inside the other room, Worth prepares to battle against Lance, but Lance immediately activates his gravile to crush him down. However, Worth is swallowed by the floor, and disappears from the field. He appears from behind, thinking it's surprising that Lance can use gravity magic. Several clones of him appear, and they launch towards Lance, but he destroys all of them with his gravile ability. Worth calls his efforts meaningless, and launches a mud spike towards Lance that he narrowly avoids. To deal with all of the mud clones, Lance thinks it's as simple as destroying the entire field. However, Worth rises from the concrete and activates his burst magic, locking his legs in place and sending several devastating spheres towards him. If this is the power of the Crown family, Worth thinks Lance's talent must be wasted, but Worth promises that he will train him if he joins the Magia Lupus. After all, he feels bad for Lance wasting his potential, so he can provide him with an environment where he can flourish. But with the garbage that's currently surrounding him, it's no wonder that Lance's abilities reek. He tells him that all of his allies are trash. In order to evolve, he needs to surround himself by the strongest allies to exist. Otherwise, his abilities will continue sinking. Lance laughs it off, thinking that his conviction isn't so weak that he needs something as superficial as an environment to get stronger. From Lance's view, he's nothing more than a second-rate loser and activates his gravile sideways to send him crashing into the wall. Even with his new technique, Worth thinks that it won't make a difference, because he can cushion the floors and walls with a muddy environment to cushion the shocks. But Rubble begins flying towards him, and he realizes that he's going to meet his doom if he stays inside of here. Worth jumps out and worries that his weakness had been uncovered, and Lance reminds him of his words about growing inside an environment. So based on his logic, it's apparent that Lance's environment is the superior one. Those awful words resonate with Worth, and he thinks that he's been strong ever since he was born with a double line. He's been at the Easton Magic Academy since middle school, and has received an education reserved for Lang's best. There's no way he couldn't be strong, but Lance's words frustrate him, so he opens a vial and reveals that it's concentrated magic that's been extracted from other students. His magic power spikes, and Worth goes on to activate his Mujerus second. A giant mud monster appears from within, the Mudoro Devilus. All magic has tears, Worth reveals, stating that basic magic, personal magic, and even advanced conditional magic pale in comparison to the second abilities. It's an unrivaled power granted only to the worthy double liners, and he remembers his father's words telling him that his achievements will determine his worth. Those without magic aptitude are worthless, but he thinks his father was wrong. He's more than his aptitude, and screams that he is worthy, whereas Lance hangs out with worthless flunkies. The Mud Devil throws a punch towards Lance, but after evading, he tells Worth that he doesn't understand anything about his flunky friends. Mash had reminded him of the most important thing in this world, his sister, so no one else can insult them except for Lance. He activates his gravile second, and chains rise from the ground along with several pillars cast within. These are his torture poles, and the Mud Devil loses the ability to control his muscles. Lance reveals that these pillars exert a gravitational field that will pull his monster away by all directions, and rip it apart. After his monster was destroyed, Worth wondered if it truly meant that he's been defeated. He remembered his father's words, saying that even becoming a divine visionary is nothing to him because he will always be worthless in his eyes. Those words make him feel worthless. Lance throws him a book, seeing that it was ragged from all the studying, and wonders what he thinks it means to be worthy. His parents had always measured worth by social standing more than anything, so based on his words, he feels like they were raised by the same family. In that environment, he felt like his worth is judged only by his magic aptitude, but he disagreed with that. There was a special person that changed everything for him, while he doesn't like the way Worth talks or acts, Lance respects all the effort he's put in and walks away. Before Naruto and Finn were about to begin their battle, 
a mysterious man walked towards the basement, wishing that the headmaster didn't force him to do this. Inside the arena, Strawberry Lemon's ally decided to walk out on her. So Strawberry Lemon went on to introduce herself as Love, the Fifth Fang, and asked Naruto if he liked her. She kept asking him if he loves her, and asked him if he thinks she's an upgraded version of Lemon. But Naruto thought that a typical normie would have found her manipulation revolting. However, she said she would let him burst her strawberry with his jitsu fingers, so Naruto climaxed. Even then, he told her that he prefers Lemon and will marry her one day, crushing Love's heart. After hearing those words, she raised her lance towards him, saying that she would annihilate him. She launched her wind tornado, and Naruto barely defended her attack with his explom, and realized that her magical power was going to be problematic. She told him that all girls are born cute and you should love them, so any guy who can't do that, deserves to pass away. Naruto thinks she's more extreme than him, but Strawberry Lemon told him he could use his fingers to Strawberry Jitsu her citrus secreting lemon, and Naruto climaxed again, apologizing because he will one day marry Lemon. Finn realized this bullshit just repeated, but Love launched her tornado at Naruto and knocked him to the ground. She told him that her dad allowed her to defeat anyone who doesn't love her, so Naruto said that he's going to be her real daddy from now on, and launched his explom towards her. As she tried to deflect his attack with her tornado, the fireballs landed in front of eyes, blocking her vision. From behind, Naruto rushed forward to try and snatch her wand away, but she knocked him off and sent him flying unconsciously, until he landed on the ground. She knew her opponents would be too weak, so she revealed that Milo's magic allows him to turn the person who opened the gate into stone, so within 30 minutes, Mash was going to become their new statue decoration. Love casted her tornado cage to crush Naruto once and for all, and she said that it's no wonder Lemon only wants Mash to cream her puff instead of him. But even Mash is going to meet his demise against Abel. As Naruto felt like he was about to pass away, he realized that she was right. There was nothing he can do, and ever since he was young, he remembered how others would bully him and tried stealing his wand. However, his sister exploded the entire area and scared off the bullies. She told him that he should have fought back, but Naruto said that fighting just makes everything worse. When she heard the defeat in his voice, she said that his attitude will be a problem when he gets a real friend. Because when that once-in-a-lifetime person comes around, Naruto will need to make sure he never betrays them. He remembers the way Silva called him delusional for thinking he's the main character, and how his crush called him disgusting. However, the only person who stood up for him was Mash, and he wasn't about to let his kindness go to waste. Love approached Finn and was about to take care of him, but in the last moment, Naruto neutralized her entire tornado, saying that he will never let her win when she mocked his friend. Love was shocked that Naruto was still standing and casted her tornado towards him, but Naruto parried it with ease. She saw the cross on his head, and remembered that children born with that mark, battle demons when their emotions release their true powers. He will no longer be just a Naruto main character wannabe. He has found his true identity. His name is Dot. As Love realized she was screwed, Dot told her that insulting his friend is a crime, and casted his machine gun explom. With hundreds of fireballs, Dot decided to rip off Mash's favorite line, saying come at me scumbag. Love realized this was the end of her, and Dot casted all of his fireballs towards her. But when the fog cleared out, she realized that none of his shots landed. He said that he never wanted to harm a girl, and told her to piss off before he changes his mind. Love realized she found the man of her dreams, and Dot feels like he's truly unlocked his protagonist powers. Finn was shocked how powerful his friend had become. After all, Dot was another double liner, but as soon as he tried to congratulate him, a stone monster appeared from behind Finn, and Dot rushed forward to take the blow in his place. The monster disappeared, and Milo was back, calling Love a failure for not dealing with them. So because she was so useless, he promises to be the one who cleans up this entire mess, and sends a barrage of stone arms towards them. Dot doubts he still has the energy to defeat the fourth fang alone. As soon as they were about to get manhandled, a sword came from the distance, crushing Milo's insides. He wondered how all his magic was destroyed, and a man stood before him. He was the divine visionary, Rain Imes, and Milo wondered why he was here. Dot recognized him as the Alder Dorm's ace, and as Milo tried explaining his situation, he launched a sneak attack onto Rain. In an instant, Rain pierced it in half, and told him not to waste his time like a piece of trash. Hundreds of swords filled the entire field and crushed Milo. Love thought that she should just defect to Alder for now, 
and Milo realized that he had no chance against Rain, so he apologized for following Abel's orders. Rain thought it was unfortunate and kicked him in the gut, saying that he doesn't care about his words when his actions say otherwise. He says that pain will be the only way he'll discipline Milo, so he'll never make sure that he doesn't make that same mistake again. Dot no longer knows if he's on the good side of this war, and Rain tells them to hurry up and leave, so Love runs away and Finn was shocked to see his brother. As he walked down the long hallway, Rain remembered the headmaster's warning about Innocent Zero's lackeys lurking around, and felt a whirlwind coming from behind him. Mash's dumbass was still eating cream puffs, and after Rain felt his pressure, he summoned a spider to measure his true magical powers. Mash thought he was screwed, so he rejected taking the test. Instantly, Rain casted his sword towards him, and Mash blocked his attack with only his fingers. He wondered why Rain would launch such a dangerous attack, saying stranger danger. The spider appraised his magic to be at zero, so Rain wondered what true power he was hiding. After he activated 3% of his partisan, the swords nearly slashed Mash to death, but he managed to make a throne out of them. Rain realized that since he's not using any magic, he was going to do a final test, and activated 10% of his partisans. The spider thought he was finished, but Mash was ready to hit a home run, and bunted every single one of the swords that Rain casted with ease. He went on to say stranger danger again, so Rain asked him for his name, and Mash introduced himself. After hearing his name, Rain remembered the words of the headmaster, asking him to look out for Mash because he has a good heart. Rain apologized for his rudeness, but Mash says he's not forgiven. As a token of apology, he gives him a handkerchief, so Mash wonders if this guy is into bunny girls. Rain doesn't say a word, and continues staring him down, so Mash accepts his gift. He asked him if he's going to fight off against Abel, and warned him that he will have a tough time without any magic when fighting Abel's strings. Mash said he can use magic, but Rain knew he was f***ing lying, so he told him that if he beats Abel, he will be able to obtain most of the school's gold coins. He said that he wishes for a strong ally to help solve this world's problems, and wished Mash good luck before walking away. Mash thought he was a good guy, and as Rain kept walking, he remembered the headmaster explaining the way Mash saved his little brother. To Rain, it doesn't matter if Mash has no magic, because he wants him to prove that he's greater than any magic user to become the divine visionary. Mash had finally arrived at Abel's door, and wondered if he should push it or pull it. For once in his life, he pushed the door open without destroying it. But in that instant, he remembered Creamy, and anger swelled inside of him, so he crushed the door open. Abel asked him if it was necessary for him to destroy every door in his way, so Mash said that he accidentally destroyed it when trying to knock. Before his eyes, Mash saw a giant sphere of energy, and Abel said he was impressed with his powers. He thought that Rain would have been the only one capable of defeating Abyss's magic eye, so he wondered if there was something else special about him. Mash realized he was about to be discovered, and told Abel to just go on with his explanation. Abel went on to call him quite capable, and Mash was glad he dodged his identity being uncovered. However, this world doesn't treat everyone equally, and he will not allow anyone of inferior genes to continue living. To him, everyone else is useless luggage, and people who can't control magic should be eliminated. Mash's dumbass was flabbergasted, and Abel said that segregating them in society isn't enough. Even the people who shelter them must be disposed of. Hearing the words shelter, Mash remembered the way Roger tried raising him as his own son, and even the first time he ate a cream puff in his life. Roger called Mash his own son, saying that he was so proud of him. After remembering those memories, Mash told Abel that he understands, but he can't befriend a cold-hearted guy like him. Abel called him dense and casted all of his dolls towards him. Meanwhile, Strawberry Lemon was glad she was finally done working but saw that the door had been broken. Inside, she realized that the mushroom head was fighting Abel, and saw the way Mash was able to dodge the acid from landing on him. Abel told him to be careful, so Mash picked up one of the doll's heads and rolled it towards the others like a f***ing bowling ball. Love wondered if she's witnessing this guy strike out all of those dolls, like they're bowling pins. Mash remembered Abel mentioning something about inferior genes earlier, asking if Abel would be the one with inferior genes when he's completely destroyed. He wondered where Lemon's being hidden, but Abel sent four of his giant dolls towards him, saying that he's sucking her citrus life energy away, because the strong take from the weak. In an instant, Mash defeated all of them, and told him that if the strong take from the weak, then he's going to take back Lemon when he wins. Abel was tired of hearing Mash's insolence, so with a single twist of his finger, he forced Mash to begin punching himself. As Mash tried resisting, he realized that his body was being controlled by threads, but as he was about to choke to death, the threads ripped off. 
Abel apologized, saying that it would be way too boring of a battle, and brought out Finn as a doll, saying that Dot was way too injured to be used as a puppet. As Finn launched towards him, Mash was able to block the attack, but Abel told him that if he lifts his hand one more time, he will rip his friend apart. With a cold glance, Mash asked him if playing dirty is the only way he could win. As Finn continued launching his attacks towards him, Mash took all of the blows until the axe completely broke off. While he had created some distance, Mash asked Abel if he still wanted the gold coin, and pinched it with all of his power. As it flied past Abel, it managed to rip the threads and free his friend while returning to him. He apologized because the coin must just be in love with him. After the sheer disrespect, Abel casted his threads towards Mash, and told him that resisting would be useless, because he will be nothing but a puppet. However, Mash told him that it doesn't matter what he becomes. He will make sure that he regrets lashing out at his friends. With his footing set up, he began destroying Abel's fingers, and leaped forward, kneeing him in the face. As Abel fell back, he activated his ultimate ability, and Mash's body began turning into a doll. This was the only spell he was hoping not to use, but it was survival of the fittest, and he transformed Mash into a doll. In his eyes, he was nothing more than a clever rabbit, and began trying to take out his coin. He told him it was vain for a rabbit to try to become a wolf, but from inside, the only thing he pulled out was a cream puff. As he wondered what it was, Mash uppercutted him, and finally saw the cream puff that he hid in his robe six episodes ago. Abel wondered how he was able to still move after becoming a puppet, because his spell blocks all electric signals from the brain. The only possible way Mash could have moved was using the spinal reflex, the action of your body instantly reacting to external threats. In order for neurons to achieve that speed, they bypass the brain and communicate with the spine, so this was the only possible way for him to break out of that lock. In other words, having his cream puff taken away from him was the same as his entire life being threatened. With all of his powers having been completely destroyed, Abel decided to finally crush Mash with his ultimate spell. A giant doll appeared from inside. This was his Mariona second, the Harm Puppet. Anything within a 100 meter radius would be turned into a puppet with its invisible strings. So Strawberry Lemon realized she was finally going to become a doll. Abel told him these strings are different, because once his body is controlled, it will be completely disfigured. This was the end for Mash, because even against a rabbit, Abel resorted to using all of his power. He wanted to thank him for his time, but saw that his puppet had been completely annihilated. As he casted away the arm, Mash wondered if he was finally being appreciated. Love went on to tell us the physics-breaking bullshit Mash was able to pull off this time. In the instant that the strings touched one side of his body, Mash instantly snapped towards them and ripped the strings apart like a CSGO Global Elite. Abel thought it was impossible for such a human to exist, and Mash asked him why he's sweating. To Abel, Mash became the most interesting person he'd ever met, and launched his marionette towards him. However, Mash adjusted his footing and one punch manned his entire toy. Abel finally realized what he never considered. As Mash teleported and activated his erector spy name magic, one thing became clear to Abel, he was the rabbit. His mother was the most compassionate person he'd ever met. Even though she was a noble, she tried giving everything away to those who weren't as privileged. But one day, his kind mother was stabbed as she was giving food to the poor. The murderer wanted to hoard all of the food to himself and stabbed her when she resisted. The way he thought of it, getting stabbed was just compensating for always having it so lucky. His mother, the only thing he ever cherished, was gone. He thought she was mistaken, because the poor people didn't need her pity. The poor are nothing but burdens on society, and they can't live in harmony together. Mash told him, don't care, don't care, still don't care, I don't care. He told him he wanted to hurry the fuck up and free Lemon since he lost. So Abel accepts his defeat and releases all the students. Mash thanked him, but thought that he wasn't the worst person alive since he did all of this for his mother. After Abel activated Marionis liberation, Lemon fell into his arm and Finn came back to life. He ran towards them, and the f***ing idiot started cheering like morons. Finn began referring to him as his hero, and Lemon called him her husband, but he was too busy juggling all the coins he earned. The morons continued Fortnite emoting until Lemon apologized about all of this, saying it's her fault. However, she wanted to say something one final time. She said she wants Mash to cream her puff. Mash told her he'll gladly do it, so she punched him in the face. Dot wanted a punch too, so he already punched himself in the face. Once he joined them back, the moron squad began celebrating once more. The only person missing was Lance, and as he walked around the campus, Rain told him to wait. He noticed that he doesn't belong in this school, and nearly annihilated Lance out of existence. 
but Rain's magic was completely negated. The spider revealed that its magic counter was completely maxed out. The man revealed his identity as Innocent Zero, and Rain wondered what an intricate criminal organization was doing in their school. Innocent Zero revealed that he was searching for something important, but Abel completely failed at finding it for them. Rain asked him what they were looking for, but the man said that he wouldn't tell him anything since they weren't friends. He realized that he doesn't have time for this useless conversation because he needs to eliminate Abel after being so worthless. As Rain tried launching towards him, a knife blocked him from moving, and one of his comrades, John Pierre, said that he was going to be his opponent. With this man being on par with a divine visionary, Rain knew that they wouldn't stand a chance against him. Meanwhile, the morons continued partying. In the past, Abyss remembers the day when Abel said he would give his eye a better purpose, and that he will become his tool from now on. The only thing Abyss wanted to do was catch up to his master now. Inside Roger's home, he wondered how Mash was doing, but Brad thought it would be awful if he wasn't able to become a divine visionary. After letting those words out, Roger wondered why he's not at work right now, so Brad revealed that he cares more about his screen time. Meanwhile, the morons are still fucking cheering and singing, ring around the rosy. Abel and Strawberry Lemon wonder how long they're going to be dancing like idiots, but the mushroom head asks to go to the bathroom after holding it the entire time. Finn is glad everything worked out, but wonders what type of f***ing crime school they're attending. However, Lemon thinks that it makes it the perfect place for Mash to cream her puff. While they were distracted by Lemon, Innocent Zero entered the room, and Dot wondered where Lance's hot face disappeared off to. The man approached them, and with a single swing of his arm, he launched them falling onto the ground. Dot tried defying him, but felt a surge of power that crushed all of his courage. When he approached Abel, the man wondered if he had managed to lose against someone, and called him worthless for not rising to the top of the school. However, he was glad that Abel leaked information about the headmaster, and used his magic to begin choking Abel. The man went on to say that they don't need him anymore, but Mash came and asked them if they wanted some orange juice and cream puffs for the party. Innocent Zero wondered who the f*** that dumb ass was, and Lemon said it wasn't time for him to be creaming her puff. A fly landed on Mash, and started itching his nose in a very interesting way, causing him to sneeze and blow all of the cream puffs towards the man. All of them wondered if Mash did it on purpose, but he asked if he would be able to get his cream puffs back. However, Innocent Zero's leader threw them all onto the floor, and Mash's mind was broken. The leader called Mash insolent, but felt giant headache crushing his head, and he wondered if Mash was the source of his pain. There's no way someone as ugly as him could be the one they were looking for, the leader thought, but remembered that he needed to be a villain in this episode, and used his magic to raise Abel. As he casted a stone spear towards Abel, Mash began running, and in the last instant, Abyss Razor appeared to shield Abel from the blow. Mash ran to see his friend, but Abyss apologized because they won't be able to eat cream puffs together anymore. Mash walked closer and handed him the handkerchief he had, and the leader realized why his attack wasn't fatal. In an instant, Mash had thrown a rock at his shoulder to redirect his spell's trajectory, and he realized that Mash was going to be a real threat. Still, the man thought Mash was a spineless moron for helping Abel, but Mash crushed the ground beneath his feet, and was determined to finish him off. With a swing of his leg, he launched a rock towards the leader, but he blocked it with his bare hands and licked it, calling him quite the rebel. Hey, well you gonna have to take me to dinner first. Mash asked him why he's licking the rock like that, wondering if he's still going through a phase. But regardless, Mash promised that he would beat the stuffing out of him. The leader decided to go along with his bullshit, saying that he needed to finish their battle within 30 minutes if he wished to save his friend, and casted his magic spells. The stone spears nearly crushed Mash, but he continued punching all of them even as all the injuries kept piling up. Pouring all of his energy into a single stone spear, the man launched it towards Mash to crush his core, and Abel knew that Mash couldn't win because of the difference in their innate talents. He remembered his mother telling him that their privilege was something given to them by pure luck, so he knew that it would be impossible for them to win against him. Even Abyss was a fool for trying to protect him, but Mash told him that he was probably happy. After all, he was alone throughout his existence. So when a person actually needed him, Abyss was finally able to find purpose in his life. In the same way, Mash wondered how he would have felt in that situation, so he's determined to save him, especially since they promised to eat cream puffs together. Abel remembered his mother's full words, saying that regardless of talents and birthrights, they're all coincidences, so he should always remember to put himself in another's position, 
because if he can do that, he will be just a little kinder to others. Vash crushed the spear standing in front of him, but the leader began casting carbon rain once again towards Mash. Abyss finally woke up and remembered the way everyone ran away from his devil eye. He was sad to have ever been born and continued being isolated until the day Abel had learned about his eye. Abyss had promised that he would hide it away from him, but Abel asked him if he could use the devil eye for his sake. And when Abyss said he didn't want everyone avoiding him as well, Abel said that he didn't care about any of that. He told Abyss that he was going to give his eye a better purpose and promised that he's going to make him his tool from now on. Abyss told Abel to run away while he can, but Abel remembered feeling the same nobility coming from his mom. As the leader continued casting his carbon rain, Mash was barely holding off all of the attacks, and Dot realized how slowly Mash had been advancing. There wouldn't be enough time for him to catch up, and if he were to try and help him, Finn and Lemon would be defenseless. The leader said he was bored of Mash's stalling, and Dot realized that Mash was completely held at a standstill. As a large barrage was about to annihilate Mash, a giant arm came to save him. Abel said that the strong have the right to take from the weak, but the weak also have the right to oppose the strong. Abel said he's seeing for himself what's righteous with his own hands, and the leader continued casting his ability until it destroyed every bit of the Marionis. He apologized because they couldn't win with that type of magic, but Mash appeared from underneath and said hi to him, uppercutting his face out of existence. The leader healed his face away and asked Mash what type of magic he uses. Mash thought about his answer carefully and said he uses the power magic. The leader didn't like his mocking answer, so he took out his mirror to deal with it. Dot instantly realized it is the holy magic mirror that reflects an amplified version of magical attacks. It's the most feared magical item that was supposed to be banished from this realm. So he warned Mash that he wouldn't stand a chance against that mirror. He wondered how Mash would be able to beat it if it relied on him not using any magic. And the leader told Mash that he's going to make him regret all of his life decisions now. He told him that he can't win with his current power. Mash completely fucked up his face with his leg, and every single one of them realized it. He wasn't using any magic. The entire time, they finally realized that the fucking mushroom head moron has been defying all laws of physics and hid his powerlessness. Strawberry Lemon started leaking citrus juice, and Lemon wondered what else his body could do. With those muscles, she thought his name shouldn't be Mash, but it should be Smash, because he's going to obliterate her put- Abel realized Mash sounds like he's a straight-up anime protagonist, but they noticed how his strike didn't even leave a scratch on the leader. He looked at his arm and noticed a magical crest forming. Because of this mark and his headache, it could only mean one thing, and he realized that Mash was the one he's been looking for. The fabric of space-time broke in half, and he thanked Mash for being able to finally meet him today. He introduced himself as Cell War and had to leave because of an urgent matter, but promised that he would see him again very soon. Mash was glad that he finally went home. He turned around and wanted to take Abyss to the infirmary, but Abel told him that it won't be necessary. His handkerchief was imbued with healing magic, so his life isn't in danger. Abyss asked Mash if they would be able to get cream puffs next time, and Abel walked away, turning around to thank Mash and promising to repay him the favor someday. Mash turned around and thought that everything was settled, but Dot wondered how he was able to do all of this without magic. Lemon was more interested in experiencing his hip-thrusting muscles, but Finn thought he would get expelled if people found out about his lack of abilities. Mash began trembling in fear and tried saying that he could use magic. They promised they would never expose Mash's secrets to the public, so Mash thanked them for being the greatest friends. Dot wondered how they were going to hide such a secret and risk them being expelled, but a man woke up and said he heard everything. He said that Mash being unable to use magic inside a magic school is illegal, so he promised to tell all the teachers. Finn realized that all the students had began waking up, and Mash's secret was being screamed to everyone. Mash realized that his time has finally come, but instead of worrying about it, the f***ing moron started mashing his face with a cream puff. Inside the other dimension, Cell War apologized to his father for the delay, but promised that he's finally found the person they'd been looking for. The man was glad that his wish was finally going to come true, and told Cell War to go and retrieve him. Watch this next video, till next time my fellow legendary plot masters.